Welcome to Valley of Death Radio, the official radio show of Horror-Punks.com in Guar Noir Magazine. I am on officially with Doyle Von Frankenstein from Gorgeous Frankenstein and, of course, some Misfits fame. What's going on, man? Uh, just doing some recording, brother. How you doing? Good, man. Um, we were kind of talking off air, man. 1980, you're 16 years old. The Misfits form in Lodi, New Jersey. Um, th- two guitar players later, you become guitar player of the Misfits. Um, did you ever think back when you became the guitarist that the icon status that you guys and, and the history you guys left on um, on the music industry, not just punk rock, but even metal? Yeah, I, th- I thought we were going to be millionaires, you know. I, I thought I'd be a millionaire before I, before I was out of high school, but I was pretty wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's always that, that grandeur, that thing where you, you're you thinking, man, this is what we want to do, and we're going to conquer the world. But, I mean, when you look back at it, man, you guys almost certainly have. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I don't own a piece of it, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gorgeous Frankenstein came about. You left the, the Misfits in 2001. Um, Gorgeous Frankenstein is is your new project, and and was was that transition made easier because you guys you brought guys in like Doctor Chud, and, and G- Michael Gray's has appeared. Did that make the transition a little easier for you, or were you ready for a change? Um, I, no, I just I, I picked that to Chud because he lives close to my house, and uh, he wants to be a musician really bad. <laughs> That's why I picked him, you know. Right. And, uh, yeah, you know, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I just wonder if having that familiarity with, uh, with, with some of your members, uh, um, makes it a little easier to, to, to do this. I mean, this is your thing. This is your band. I mean, you've, you know, um, does that make it a little easier? Um, this is your project. Sure, you know, you know how to work with them, you know what I mean? Right. So you get along with them. That's always, that's always a plus. You don't have to. You know, meet and then deal with somebody's personality that you don't know. Um, you know, some of the things that have come up with this is uh, the Legacy Tour with Danzig. You, you did a couple of dates last year that were absolutely huge. People were, I don't want to say shocked. Um, I was surprised, um, to say the least. I mean, I, I keep watching videos of it up on YouTube and stuff. How did that happen? How was it you or was it Danzig or how did that come about? Uh, he just uh, called me up and said, uh, you want to do some shows? I said, sure. That was it. So, the, uh, um, is, is, is there still, the history's there with, with, with Glenn. I mean, uh, nobody knows what really happened, why Glenn left and all that stuff. You know what I mean? The misfits. And, and I, we certainly don't know all the backstage stuff, and I don't want to get into that. Um, but what I want to get into is, is just, was it was it like, it's a, it's finally time. You know what I mean. It, you know what I mean. It's been twenty some years. Was it just? Did it just feel right now? Um, well, he uh, we actually tried to do a, a Misfits reunion, and uh, we had a meeting me, him, and Jerry. And you know, uh, I left um, thinking we were going to do it, and um, you know, like the next day or so. It was off, and then a couple months went by. Uh, you no, know, about two years went by actually. And um, I was on vacation at my wife's parents' house out in Chicago, and um, Crazy Craig had called me. Um, Crazy Craig is his personal assistant. He calls me up and he's like, uh, "Hey, God, I want to talk to you about something really important. Call us at the office tomorrow." I said, All right, so I called him up, and he's like, "Hey, I'm doing some shows." You want to do them? I said, yes, I do. He goes, I'm starting a label. Do you have a demo? And I said, yes, I do. He goes, if I like it, I'll put it out. So I sent it to him. He liked it. And, uh, you know, he just, you know, talked about doing the show. And I was like, yeah, whatever, let's do it, man. I'm, I'm, I wanted to do The Misfits. You know, I still want to do The Misfits with Jerry and Glenn. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's like pulling teeth out of a fucking rhino. <laughs> you know, uh, you and I... <clears throat> Um, you're not gonna remember, but you and I met once. Um, I was in a cover band in Chicago um, when you guys were doing the uh, um, the 25th anniversary tour, and uh, okay. 
uh, we actually got to go backstage and we opened for you in Chicago at the House of Blues that one time. House of Blues, right. And, uh, dude, you were just awesome, man. I, you know, you and uh, uh, Jerry and them, I mean, it was just, it was an incredible show, man. Um, what, what to you is the status of, of horror punk now? Do you still listen to it or, or do you get involved in it? I mean... Gorgeous Frankenstein and even the the two EP releases you you released with Jerry was always more metal to me than it was punk. But do you listen to some of the horror punk bands that are out there right now? Um, I don't listen to much, you know, because um, I, I I feel if you're listening to somebody else's stuff, you're not writing anything. Okay. You know, so uh, basically, you know, I got like a lot of Black Sabbath CDs in my uh, thing while I work out. That's about it. And, uh, you know, I listen to some stuff like, I listen to the Cancer Slug because he's, uh, he's my singer and he's, and he's just out of his mind and I love listening to it because it just cracks me up. And, uh, you know, I really don't listen to much, man. We've, we've, uh, we've actually tried to have Alex on here, but he's on really busy on tour right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you are doing some legacy dates this year, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We know you guys are working on a new album. Any time, any idea when that's going to drop? We're shooting for October. October. Uh, after we uh, after we get out off this Danzig tour, um, gonna, we got about another month of recording, and uh, we're going to go mix it and hopefully get it out in October. You know. Um. One thing, uh, the Annihilator guitar you play. Um, I've always right. wondered if that's going to be released as a as a consumer product. Is it now? I know it you guys. Is. It is. Uh, it's released. Uh, a small company in Baltimore is doing it. It's uh, October Guitars. October. Okay. And we're still trying to get it right. So. Okay. Now I remember every you guys used to. One, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I know there's uh, a question. Yeah, every time they give, they give me one, it, it seems like they gave me the same one they gave me last time. I'm like, well, you didn't change anything. What the fuck are you doing? Well, I read an internet story once where you made your own guitars. You basically made them yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah. The ones I use, I made. Um, was there a reason when you guys came back um, for the for the two Misfit albums, and, and actually there was cuts from the Crips, and there was um, a couple B sides, and with Gorgeous, is there a reason why your guitar playing went from a punk sound to more of a metal sound? Because dude, you can play. <laughs> It always, uh, I've always had a metal sound, you know, I always had a, a, a scooped out sound, even back when we played with Glenn, you know, in the 80s, you know. It just, it just, oh, it's it really just, sounds the same to me. Yeah, well, it's just, just it, I mean, maybe the production value or whatever, man, it's just, um, one of my favorite. Uh, you, you never get the right production, man, nobody ever gets it, really, you know. Right now, what I'm working on is about the closest to what it's supposed to sound like. Um, I just remember the, uh, the the actual breakdown part in Helena being one of the fastest things I've ever seen anybody play in my entire life. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of notes going down. I've tried to play that 10,000 times, and it just hand, I get hand cramps. I just can't do it, man. Um, you got to leave your body, man. That's the trick. Um, man, this is a, um, I'm a fanboy talking to my favorite guys, so if I'm, I'm, I'm sounding a little stuttery here. Um, let's talk about the, you guys, you have your own hot sauce, man. Is this like something that's going to like I eat do. my insides out or what? No, no. This one, the Made in Hell is not really that hot. It's it's real tasty, but we're working on one that's called Abominator. And it's it's going to it's gonna fry your butthole out. Um, I have to ask a question, man. As a wrestling fan, did you enjoy your stint with the WCW? Or was that something you just did because somebody told you to do it? Um, I... I enjoyed it because I went in there and I stole the Golden Woman and I left. That's uh, co that's correct. That was yeah. Fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, is she going to be uh, on the Legacy tour with you guys this year, or is she still uh, um, doing her own thing? I know she's done the independent circuit for a little bit now. Yeah, she does that. She's uh she's going to Hawaii in about a week to do some uh, like trade show stuff. Okay. Some for some company, but, um, no, she's not coming on the tour. No. Uh, do you still go home to Lodi? 
What's it like for you? What no. is it like for Doyle to go home to Lodi? No. What's that? Well, I, mean, I was just kind of wondering what it's like for Doyle if he does go home to Lodi, what it's like, because it's like uh, Lodi, New Jersey has become this sacred horror punks type place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> well, it isn't, but I mean, in some people's minds, it is. You know what I mean? It's it's become like, um, and, and, and just the uh, the fact that you know, I mean, you guys are the originators of of horror punks. I mean, uh, of, of what that is, and uh, I mean, people just you know consider Lodi the birthplace of horror punk. Um, I just wondered, you know, if you do go home, if 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 you're treated a little differently in in Lodi, or um, or you just still, um, you know, Doyle. I don't really go there, and uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't communicate with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the questions I have to ask you is, uh, um, like I said, we've had Erie on in, in, in some of the artwork. Um, do you still talk to Erie, or he seemed to? Yeah. He seemed. He said nothing but good things about you when we had him on. Yeah, I talk to him. Um, You're making another book. Yeah, I just thought about that. Yeah, I'd love to have some of his artwork, man, and some of his pictures. I just don't make that kind of bread. Yeah, he's a great photographer, man. Um, so besides music, what I mean, what gets you creative juices flowing? Do you have that outlet, like you know, some people paint, some people take photography, or is it just all about the music for you? I paint. Um, making guitars is a pretty artistic thing, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I paint. Um, you know, that's about it. I make all my equipment. I make my speaker cabinets and the guitars and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Are you, is, is, are you like a homebody kind of guy, man? Is that is that what you like to do? I mean, I am. I, I don't like to leave. I'm not very party eccentric, man. I'm just kind of a stay at home and, and, and do my thing kind of guy. <clears throat> if, if I'm in the party, I like to party in my house. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a. It's it's too. I'm too cheap, man. It's it's expensive to go out nowadays, man. I just prefer to drink at home. I know you. You don't go buy drinks. You go buy a bottle. Fucking a hundred times cheaper. Oh yeah. By the time you pay two drinks at a club prices, now you're, you might as well just go fucking buy a bottle and just enjoy yourself at home. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Um. So let's uh let's talk about where people can find you, man. Um. We know you got your Facebook page. Do you run your own Facebook page? Or... I don't have a Facebook page. I don't know who that is. Oh, you don't. You, that's not yours. No, I don't do that. Okay. And, uh, of course, you have your own, you know, you can subscribe to you on Facebook, and you guys have your website. Um, do you guys, do you kind of like like doing the, the social media thing to keep in touch with your fans? I don't, I don't do anything. This is it. All I do is the interviews. I don't, I don't do anything else. Okay. All right. Well, um, do you know the legacy dates for this year? Do you have them in ink, or are they, are they set in stone? Uh, they're set in stone. They're on, I guess they're on Glen site. Okay. You know, the Danzig Seventh House, probably. Um, yeah, I think there's a TBA that's uh, San Francisco. Okay. And, uh, of course, we can, we're can. we definitely looking forward to uh, your CD when it drops in October, man. I'm really looking forward to it, man. I can't wait to finish it. I'm so sick of doing it. I always want to kill myself, man. I can't <laughs> take any more. <laughs> Do you know? Do you not enjoy the recording? Pro is it the recording process or is it the creative process? Well, we're doing it ourselves. We're doing it ourselves, and um, you know, it's just—it's a lot, man. We're trying to do as many songs as we could. You know, I'd love to do a double album. We got so many songs. There's so many good ones. We don't know what which ones to do. Okay, that's a good problem, but it's—you know—it's just it's taking a while to do it. Um, you know, we, we had to learn everything and buy everything and. And it's just like, uh, we had to start over, and it's like, oh, my God. Well, does that make it easier? I mean, I know it's a, it's, it's kind of a, a learning curve when you record yourself at home. Um, I mean, we have Pro Tools here, and we have all the stuff here to do it ourselves, too. But, I mean, I, I kind of just fumble dick my way around that make it halfway decent. You know what I mean? But for, like, you guys, man, right. is, it, is, it, is it like a steep learning curve, or is it like you just want to smash it, or, or how does that work? Uh, I wanted to smash it a couple of times. Sometimes it freezes up on you, and you're just like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Oh man, I was lose uh, the whole day. What you did, yeah? I was trying to sign into my studio tonight, man, and it wouldn't let me. I kept saying the servers were full, and I'm like, "You motherfuckers, not tonight. Any night, but tonight, yeah. man." <laughs> uh, technology, man. I, I kind of get it, but I know just enough to make myself dangerous, man. 
It's it's yeah. You have to you have to need a certain um, application to actually learn it. You can't just read the book. No, you know, it doesn't make any sense. But um, dude, you know what, man? You're a pleasure, and uh, um, you know, come back when the album's done, please. You and Alex together. Sure. You uh, get the number. Call me. You're welcome, bro. And thank you very much for coming on, man. You've made you made my my childhood dream come true, man. Thank you very much. Uh, right on, brother. Thanks, man. All right, brother. Take care, man. That is. Doyle Von Frankenstein from the Misfits, man. He's a cool ass cat. Um, we're gonna play some gorgeous Frankenstein's for you right now. Why well, I probably go uh, go wipe the spooge out of my shorts right now, man. So check it out. This is gorgeous Frankenstein right here on VOD Radio.